Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce up to the uh, to the podium Angelica Balthazar. Uh, this will be our final showcase for the day. Uh, Angelica is uh, a health and human services industry specialist for Esri. Esri is one of our uh, supporters, both at the Health Data Consortium and for the event today. She currently works with government and organizations across the globe, educating and evangelizing on the use of GIS, which we'll define, GIS and Health and Human Services. Welcome, Angelica. Try to get out of the way. Oh, and, I, and I know that I am the last. Oh, clicker, that would help. Well, thank you for inviting me here this afternoon. Um, I know that there's a few people that have asked me who Esri is, and I'm going to try to define that in a nutshell because it really isn't the Esri show, but more about talking on how open data and GIS and the world of state and local government and community-based organizations, how that all plays in together. But I do think that GIS has a tremendous role to play here. So I'm hoping by the end of this, you'll have a better idea. And if you need some better examples, because I'm not going to go live, because technology does not like me today, we're just going to go straight through a PowerPoint and talk a little bit about human services. First and foremost, Esri is a GIS company, which stands for Geographic Information Systems. So in a nutshell, it's taking all those bits of data that we've been talking about today and visualizing it, putting it on a map, uh, putting it in a graphic so that you can better understand it, your policymakers can understand it, and then it can be easily shared. Uh, more than anything, Esri is very honored to be a founding supporter of the Health Data Consortium. We have a continued commitment to innovation, and hopefully we can share some of those things with you today. I like to talk about health and human services. And what I loved what Daniel said is that human services is vital and it is, it is important. And sometimes it gets lost in the discussion because we hear health data police, health data police. I don't want to change the name. I just want to remind people that human services, those safety nets, I'm sorry, those safety nets are crucial to keeping our families whole, healthy, and out of institutions such as hospitals and facilities. As a company, Esri is, is heavily engaged in health and human services. And most states across this country are our customers in one way, shape, or form. We want them to be successful. So I would like to talk about human services police. No, I'm joking. I just want you to be aware, and I would be remiss as a social worker not to remind you that these are important and essential items. We as the government have been collecting data on our residents even before they're born. We have WIC programs. We have prenatal health care. Before our children are born and when they're born, we collect data about where these low birth weight babies are happening, which is a critical crisis that's occurring in many states across the country. We have data that is available in which analysts are, are taking hold of and analyzing and, and trying to understand where these children are, are, are being born so that we can make some changes in their lives. There's some success happening in the state of Louisiana where they've analyzed this data and they understand that 80% of their low birth weight babies are coming out of one neighborhood. That's significant and that's extremely important. And so there is some shifting of not only funding but resources to make a difference in those children's lives. We have a new aging population. We keep talking about the slower tsunami, but we forget that these are the same people that developed half the codes that are behind all the apps that we operate today. They are far more technologically savvy than their predecessors. They have greater expectations of their government, of their services, and we need to step up to the plate to provide them the services they require. We've also, as a nation, have faced some very significant hard economic times. We have families in distress. Homelessness has increased. We have a drain on our resources, public housing requests, and people need access to services. There's tons of information out there. We need to give them the access. We need to give it to them in one place. Because our families need help. They're being separated by divorce, immigration, incarceration. Child support services are bursting at the seams. Data plays a role. We have a lot of data. What are we going to do with it? We now take that data and put it in a way that's going to be useful, not just to government employees, to citizens at large. We need to give them an opportunity to analyze that data, digest those outcomes, present it in a way that's collaborative, and that we can share with others. 
This is where Esri comes into play. This will be my quick little brief shot of Esri. We believe that we can help with open data and data sources and providing them in four accessible ways. Via maps, infographics, geographic, data enrichment, and report. We like to say that they, our, our view of the world is more than just a pretty map. And data is useful. You can analyze it. You can understand where clusters and hotspots are occurring. And you, can make it. you can dig a little deeper and understand the population behind it through dynamic infographics. You can go a little further and understand the geography and the neighborhoods where our, our residents live. Where are facilities located? Where are schools? Where are transportation routes? And how that affects their life. We have layers of demographics and socioeconomic layers of data that you can access again, help you understand the spending patterns, understand where and who has insurance, who has access to food or doesn't have access to a supermarket or access and how to get them. You can find that information reported out through a map through your infographics, through spreadsheets, or through reports. So let's get to the nitty gritty and show some of the fun ways that people are taking that data and sharing it in a way that's collaborative, it's interactive, and sometimes helps tell a story. Hence, this is an Esri story map. This is information taken from CMS talking about where the uninsured populations live. Very simple, pulling the information out of Hispanic populations and their levels of income and, where, and who has insurance and who doesn't. It's more than just a spreadsheet where you're digging through numbers and trying to understand how much. This tells you the who and it tells you the where. To answer some of my human service folks in the back, there is a venue in which you can share and you can collaborate. And this is my favorite example. And this is, these are my, my shining stars right now. This is the state of New Mexico. Is anyone familiar with their community data collaborative? The state of New Mexico is unique in which they are the first human services department and public health department in the state that actually agreed that they have the same clientele. Because many states, many counties will tell me, no, no, we have different people. I said, no, you don't. If you really layered your clients together, you realize that the majority of the, you are serving the same people. So what they've done, initially they decided they're going to share information via maps. So they put their maps together and shared it interdepartmentally. It was very successful because analysts on each side weren't creating the same uh, maps over and over. They realized they were getting the same requests from their community organizations. So they created a public portal site. This is actually available online to anybody. Any community-based organization can go online and access all kinds of different information. This is just one sheet from the gallery. Everything from educational attainment, uh, first five centers, seniors, veteran services, access to food. They can import their own data and use it for strategic planning or funding applications. To me, that's brilliant. It's transparent, and it saves a lot of resources and time. The city of Los Angeles is also doing the same thing, but reaching out to their residents, say, how can government better serve you? This is, this is the resources and information we have available to you. What else can you do? How else can we serve you? I'm going to move fast because I only have like two and a half minutes left. This is an app. This is a teaching app created by my manager or emeritus manager, Bill Davenhall, to teach people that place matters. Where you live has an impact on your health. This is actually available on iTunes if you want to get uh, download it and play with it. You put in your address. It tells you all the environmental hazards and risks that are around your area. This is part of his lifelong goal and dream, that one day this type of information will be embedded in every EHR across the country, so that 20, 30 years down the line, when something happens, your physician has a better understanding of why you might be sick. We switch over to the foster care side. We have the National Council of Crime and Delinquency. Does access open data streams of weather reports and fire? And so when a disaster hits in the state of California, Human service information that's been uploaded to this group is now meshed with open data streams. And so instantly, any county that has a, responsible, has a responsibility for a foster child gets immediate notice that their child is in the area of impact. There's a fire, there's an earthquake, there's a flood. 
your child might be in San Francisco, but you, a responsible party, might be in Los Angeles. You're going to get alerted before you ever even hear it on the news. We have people that have utilized this in the state of Delaware for food inspection, where you can not only find out where people have been, where restaurants have been inspected, but you can also open up the app and see the report. And the same goes along for skilled nursing facilities. Again, not only understanding the grade, but actually seeing what the citations are, what the commendations are, because this is where your loved one's going to go, and you need all the information you can access. And just get through some of these a little faster. Um, this is an app that was created for the Susan G. Cohen Foundation. And we'll be looking at the data streams of where late stage breast cancer was reported. So we can better understand where resources were lacking, where we need to move some education to make a difference for the next generation. And they've done the same thing along for diabetes. In closing, why I love Healthy Palooza. I think it's a fantastic conference, and I love the people, and I just, it just their heart is in the right place, and it's so exciting. I, I look forward to the day where those types of events aren't necessary, where open data is natural, and it's having an extra button on your keyboard. So we can take this mess that we have, and give it to people who are creative and innovative, let them make some sense of it, and as my friends across the pond have said, open up your data and a bloke in skinny jeans right here will build a much better app than you ever could. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>